How's it going, everyone? Welcome to another episode of the Respect and Pray Show with your host, the one and only Miguel Mike Medina, Triple M. In this episode, I have this man that he is just doing a lot. He's climbing up the charts. Um, he's a hard worker. Um, working on social media, coordinating content strategy. The list goes on and on and on. And he did it while working for two big um, organizations in the sports world. I'm not going to give away anything because I'll let you guys um, watch the interview, see for yourself, get to know more about this person and how it all began for him to where he is now. And I have so much respect and I highly praise this guy for everything that he's been through, for everything that he's doing. And I can't wait to see what more he's going to be doing in the future. So watch this interview. I hope you enjoy it. And like I said, I hope you enjoy it. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a great honor to present to you. He's a hardworking guy, Mr. Zachary Galea. Zachary, thank you so much for taking the time to do this interview with me. How are you, man? Definitely, man. It's my pleasure. I'm doing doing great. Busy as always, but uh, but definitely doing great. All right. So we got to start from the top. Um, when did um your passion for sports um all began? I mean, that was I'm sure not long after I was brought into this world. Um, you know, being being born in Pittsburgh and being born in the family that I am that loves sports. Um, you know. I, I'm pretty sure I was one of the babies that they lay a terrible towel over when you're you're born. So, uh, you know, in some instances, it's you don't really have much of a choice. But um, but I've always loved sports. I, uh, you know, I grew up playing baseball, played hockey all the way through college. And it's always just been a big part of of who I am and what I've done. And, um, you know, being, you know, being from Pittsburgh, sports are a, a big part of, you know, our identity and um, just what we do and care about and follow along on a daily basis. So. Um, you know, probably since birth and then, you know, just being able to, to have the opportunity to play sports at a high level for a long time. Um, it just really has always been something that was really important to me. Pittsburgh is definitely a big sports town. I haven't been to Pittsburgh, but it's on the radar for me to go and, you know, check on, um, watch the Steelers play, the Pirates play. Um, were you a fan of both teams or, or do you had a favorite sport growing up? Yeah, I mean, I I think hockey and baseball have always been kind of my top two. It was always what I was involved in. So always a huge Pittsburgh Penguins fan, always a huge Pirates fan. Um, Steelers, you don't really have a choice. You're you're a Steelers fan if you're from Pittsburgh. So um, always followed along with football. I love football and and still do to this day. And um, you know, but it was always really hockey and baseball were my two. And um, you know, being able to go out to to the desert and spend some time out in Arizona when the the suns were heating up, uh, no pun intended, um, kind of kicked into gear my love for, you know, the NBA and for basketball. And I, I've been a, you know, a diehard suns fan ever since too. And I started to kind of, um, watch more, you know, professional soccer and, you know, any really competition based, you know, things that I can watch and, and invest my time in and, you know, kind of let go and be that unruly fan is, is always interesting to me. So you say you play at a high level for which sport particularly, and do you play mostly in high school and in college for which sport was it? Yeah. So baseball, I, I stopped playing once I got to high school and then kind of picked it up a little bit when I was in college, but um, hockey has always been my sport. Um, I went to a prep school in high school to play hockey, ended up going to play hockey, uh, junior hockey in Canada for a few years after high school, and then ended up at, uh, at Adrian college in Michigan to play uh, play hockey there for four years. So that was really kind of the the sport that took me the furthest. Um, but uh, but I've always loved, you know, love baseball as well. You like you mentioned, you attend the Adrian College. Would you say that being in that institution is where you started getting into social media coordinating or do radio and things like that? Yeah. So, I mean, you know, I'm going to date myself a little bit, but, you know, graduating in 2011, social media really wasn't a career at that point um, or something that was necessarily on my radar. Um, you know, it was always for me, I, I wanted to find something where I could combine my love of sports and kind of the creative side. Cause I love to, you know, I love to write, I love to paint. 
um, you know, video production, editing, screenwriting, all of that stuff really kicked into gear for me in college. Um, but I really wasn't sure what I wanted to do after school. And, and it was really trying to open as many doors as I possibly could. So um, took a lot of classes and ended up falling in love with kind of the communication side of things and um, really thought I was going to go to film school after college, but then realized how much that would cost and uh, figured it was probably time to do something different. So a couple odd jobs here and there and wasn't cr quite finding my niche and and it just kind of, it, it all worked out. You know, my first job when I was in, uh, in NASCAR at the local NASCAR track in Michigan, that was like my first kind of run through when it came to social media for a brand. It was, you know, I wasn't even sure that that was part of the job. I thought it was a production, you know, creative storytelling job and it became, you know, running and managing all of these accounts. So, um, you know, I had experience doing, you know, goofy things with my friends on social media and making videos and, um, you know, nothing super formal or anything that would probably qualify as experience, but, um, but it was always my goal to find something that kind of merge, you know, the creative with the athletic and and see what would come of it. And from there, it led you to work to social media coordinator for the Steelers, um, your own hometown in Pittsburgh. And you were there for three years. Describe how was the culture to work for the Pittsburgh Steelers? Because this is your hometown. So you grew up there. So the fact that you got to work there for three years as a social media coordinator, how was the culture like and what were things that you had to do as a social media coordinator that us, the viewers, we might not know? Well, I mean, it, it it's funny to say, you know, for such a global brand and, and a, you know, a logo that speaks to, you know, the entire world, it's in, I think it was 2015 when I was hired, I was the first ever full-time social media person that they had ever had in the organization's history. So with that came a lot of responsibility of not only, you know, being the one who's making graphics and working with our video team and and kind of putting together a plan for what we want social media to be, but really what is, you know, what is the brand of the Pittsburgh Steelers when it comes to social media and how do we want to talk to fans? How do we want to, you know, take things from where they are to the next level and continue to grow? So it it gave me an, an incredible opportunity to not only learn from some of the best people in the industry, but, you know, do so in black and gold, which, you know, being from Pittsburgh, like you said, is it, it meant everything, you know, that was, that was a dream job and, and a, a job that I would not be where I am today without that experience. And, um, but yeah, I mean, when I first started, it was, it was me and, and, you know, soon after I had an intern, but it was really, you know, I was making graphics, I was covering events, I was doing all the posting, I was traveling with the team, like there was a lot that goes into it. And it was a lot of work and, and, but it helped prepare me for, you know, where I am today. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's definitely not as easy as some people make it out to be, uh, especially when you're kind of building something, not necessarily from scratch, because, you know, that's like saying Nike never had a social strategy and I'm building it. You know, they like, they have a voice, they have a brand, they have an identity and you're trying to figure out how that works when it comes to the channels that you're in charge of. So, um, so yeah, I mean, working with the Steelers, it's, it's very family oriented. I mean, just as everyone always says, it's, you know, it's been, the organization has been in the Rooney family, the, its entire existence. So, um, you know, you, you definitely feel that when you're there and, and everyone is, you know, there to help and try and make things, uh, better and and kind of push things to the next level. Now let's go to the desert because you worked there, Arizona Cardinals. Um, you it seems like you promoted about two or three times there because you went from director of social media to director of digital content and then to director of digital strategy. So um, you must have done quite a quite a <laughs> heck of a job there, you know, to get promoted. But that feels good, so I'm happy for you. Um, congrats sure. on everything that you're doing so far and even much more that you're going to be doing going forward. But you were also there for three years. Um, making that shift from Pittsburgh to Arizona, even though you're back to Pittsburgh now I, um, yeah. at the moment, but let's stick with Arizona for now. The desert, Arizona Cardinals, shoot away. Tell us um, yeah. <laughs> how was that like and and how long did it took for them to promote you to each position? Um, were you, um, were there any side of you that you felt that you were very tenacious in your work ethic or just take it from there, walk us through? 
Yeah. I mean, for me, like just my own mindset is it's always, I want to be 1% better every single day, you know, whether that's as a dad, as a husband, as a, you know, a brother, a friend, a son, uh, you know, a boss, an employee, whatever it is, I just want to make sure that I'm progressing in the right way. And, um, and never saying stagnant or, or, you know, kind of resting and being satisfied with what I've done. Cause no matter what you do and, you know, no matter who you are, it's, it, there's always room to improve, you know, Patrick Mahomes isn't just kind of sitting around saying, you know, well, I'm, I'm good enough. I think we'll take it from here. It's, there's always something that you can grow and, and do and, and improve on. So, um, so that kind of, that's honestly what led me to the Cardinals. You know, I was kind of in at that point in my career, I, I spent four years with the the Steelers and I think I'd kind of hit my point where it was time to, to take that next step and take that jump and, and try and, you know, and try and do more. And so the, the offer came from the Cardinals and, and it was never something that I anticipated in. I thought, you know, being a Pittsburgh kid, I, I didn't plan on leaving the black and gold at any point, but the opportunity was just too good to pass up. And um, so, you know, going out to a place, you know, I'd never been to Phoenix until I went out for my job interview. Um, I didn't really know much at all about the Cardinals as, you know, from a fan's perspective. Um, so it was, it was, uh, you know, it was a culture shock. It was, it was having to not only learn, you know, how to work in this new environment and a new role, but also understanding, you know, the people you're talking to, like who, who is the fan base? What do they care about? You know, they're football fans, but they're different than Steelers fans. They're different than Cowboys fans. It's, you know, no matter where you go, you have to know who you're talking to and who your audience is. So that was really, you know, the first few months of me being there was just learning and soaking everything in and asking questions. And I'm sure being annoying about it, but just trying to, to gain all the knowledge I could to know that, you know, when we're putting a plan together to share content, it's being shared in a way that resonates with the people you're talking to. So, um, you know, everything there was was amazing. And it was so great to work with, you know, the team that I had there and, um, you know, boss I had there was amazing and, and, you know, allowed me to grow and challenged me to do different things and step outside of my comfort zone and, and really learn and grow. So, um, you know, and, and I can't thank him enough for uh, Tim Delaney with the Cardinals. Uh, can't thank him enough of just, um, you know, having that faith and trust in me. And, you know, I, I went from being a, a coordinator for four years with the Steelers. I was two years with NASCAR was a coordinator. And, that, and I basically jumped an entire level from coordinator, skip manager, right to director. So there was a lot of growing pains and trying to figure things out. But, um, but that trust was there and and it kind of spoke for itself. So then being able to take what I was able to do with our social team and expand it to all of our digital content um, and then expand it even further to our strategy and what we're doing across the board was, was just a, a blessing and, and an honor to be able to, to do something like that for, you know, a very prestigious team. And, and, you know, there are only 32 NFL team teams and to say you were, you know, a director of one of their strategies is, is pretty impressive. So, um, so no, I mean, it, it was, it was hectic. It was, you know, it was difficult going from being a coordinator to a director. Cause now it's, you know, as a coordinator, I was the one doing everything. And as a director, now you have to empower and guide the people who do everything. So it was very much a, a shift in kind of my thought process and how I approach things. But, um, you know, it, it, again, it, it helped me grow and learn and got me, you know, got me back home. I'm glad to hear that in life and in any career that we choose um, in order to gain success, in order to get where we got to go, we have to start getting comfortable by doing the uncomfortable things. We have to get out of the comfort zone. And that's just the reality of life. So and that's something me, myself, you know, since I'm a um, content creator, filmmaker, writer, sports writer, a bunch of stuff. I'm always trying to look for, OK, what's next? What's the next thing that is hard for me to do in order to accomplish that? So I'm always, every single day, waking up with that mindset. What's the thing that is mostly complicated that I need to get it done? But um, in life, you know, we go through adversity. So tell us at any point in your career so far, you've gone through an adversity and how you overcame. I mean, I would say just basically the the transitions that I've made, you know, going from Going from NASCAR, where we basically had four people that managed, you know, six different departments. Once you got somewhere else, it was, you know, it was a very small mom and pop shop that we did a lot and experienced a lot. So, 
you were spread pretty thin. You know, I was young and still learning. So, you know, mistakes are made and you have to kind of figure out who you are in those moments. And, um, you know, you're, everyone's going to make mistakes. It's just how you respond, how, you know, what's next and how do you learn? How do you use that to be better, you know, in the next step of your, your career? So, um, but, you know, going from there to the Steelers where it was just, you know, it's this global brand. It's not, you know, it's not a NASCAR track in Michigan that maybe people haven't heard of. It's, it's the big time. Like this is a, a brand that if you make any missteps, you're going to hear about them for quite some time. So, um, so that pressure was always there. And then, like I said, going from Pittsburgh to Arizona and jumping to, you know, a leadership position where, you know, it, it you never really get leadership training. You just have to kind of figure it out. So um, I think that was kind of the biggest adversity that I faced was now, you know, I had this role and I had this, um, you know, the responsibility that I was hoping for, but it was like, okay, well, but now what do you do with it? And, and how do you want to be a leader? And, um, you know, it, that was something I struggled with when I first started there. And, um, you know, and then coming here there, you know, I've been able to, we have a, a leadership class here, a leadership course, and, uh, you know, a group of leaders get together once a month, talk about some different things, read some books. And it's really helped in kind of my viewpoint of what being a leader means. And it's not necessarily that day-to-day you know, what's getting posted where and how is it getting posted? And, and it's it's much more of how do you empower your people? How do you, you know, make sure that they feel um, feel appreciated? How do you make sure that you are keeping in mind their growth and their career and helping them grow? And, um, you know, and coincidentally, my wife and I had our, our first child uh, two Januaries ago. So it's like, it's very similar. Being a boss is like, is very similar to being a dad. You know, it's it's very much less about me and more about them and, and how I can help them and, and watching out for them and giving them guidance and, um, uh, and helping them grow. But, um, you know, a, a quote, I always go back to, I, I don't know who I stole it from on the internet, but it's, uh, be brave enough to suck at something new today. And that's, it goes back to what you were even saying is just like, I can't be, you know, I can't be, no one can be afraid to mess up or make mistakes or not be perfect because it's, it's impossible. You know, it's, um, you know, if you went through life making no mistakes, I mean, I, I feel like that would probably be a pretty boring life. So, um, you know, the mistakes are going to come and things are going to happen, but it's all about how you how you get to that next thing and how you learn from from that mistake and make yourself better. All right. So I have two final questions for you. And this is a double one. The first one. In the last. I'll say 20 years. Steelers, Penguins, they've combined for three titles. Which of those five titles meant a lot to you the most? Number one. And number two, say that right there. And number two, what advice do you have for anyone who wants to break into social media coordinating or just media, sports media in general? Yeah. I mean, I would say... It's probably a tie like the the Steelers Super Bowl win, oddly enough, over the Cardinals um, down in Tampa was one that I'll never forget just because my dad and my uncle got to go to that game. So um, not, at you know, I watched on TV, but it was something that, you know, my dad, my uncle, who have been Steelers fans their whole life, got to experience that in person. And that that means a lot to me and, and was really cool. And um, and then the most recent Stanley Cup win by the, the Pens. Um, when they were playing Nashville, it was, uh, you know, the game that they won the cup was down in Nashville, but they showed the game at the Penns Arena in Pittsburgh. So my wife and I came and watched it on the scoreboard and watched the Penguins win the Stanley Cup, which was really cool. So, um, you know, any championship from your own team is really cool. But, um, you know, those are the two that kind of stick out to me. And then um, advice for kind of breaking into to whatever industry is just, again, it's it's being very specific and being very um, coordinated with how you want to get where you're going, you know, making sure that any position that you're taking or applying for is going to help get you to that next step and get you to your final goal. Um, And then really like the application process is you're less likely to get a job by just blasting a mass, you know, application out there with the same resume, the same cover letter to, you know, 50 different jobs instead of picking maybe the 10 jobs that you really, really want, doing your research on, you know, the position, doing, you know, reading the job description, um, doing your research on kind of the company and the role and the brand, and really, 
using your cover letter and your resume to your advantage, you know, write a cover letter that answers all of the questions that the hiring manager has on the job description, make it, you know, really, really easy on whoever's hiring that position to be, you know, to see your stuff and say, oh, this person knows exactly what I'm looking for. So, you know, two pieces of paper, your resume, your cover letter are literally your foot in the door. So how do you make those pop and how do you make those, you know, get the attention that they deserve? And especially, you know, in, in an industry like ours, um, you know, be creative. Like, no, there's no right or wrong way to write a resume. You know, my resume, I made it so it looks like my Twitter account and, you know, my job descriptions or tweets in, you know, my feed. It's it's just a way to show my resume is going to be different than everyone else's. So even if it's not better than someone else's, they're still going to stop and read it because it's different. It's creative. It shows that I have put a lot of work into the stuff that I care about. So um, those are two big things. And then really the third is just be open to, to anything, you know, like I, I was never a NASCAR fan. I, you know, didn't know much about NASCAR. I'm still not a NASCAR fan, but being open and taking that job and learning and going into it with, you know, an open mind, I learned so much and it got me to where I am today. So, you know, whether it's minor league baseball or, you know, um, whatever, whatever it might be, you know, working for a bank, whatever it is, as long as it's going to get you experience and build your resume and build that experience uh, base for what's next, it's, it's worth giving a shot. And there's a lot of beautiful places in this world. So, don't limit yourself to one city, one state, you know, one country. If, um, you know, if, if there's a job in England or Australia or Seattle, it, it's, it, it's going to be scary at first because moving, you know, 36 hours across the country wasn't easy, but I wouldn't trade it for anything. You know, it, it helped me grow. It challenged me and, and got me to where I am today. Amen. Great advice. Great advice. And where can we follow you on social media? Um, I, I mean, probably just LinkedIn. I really don't use a lot of the others um, just because my whole job is focused on it. So I do have, I have, a, I guess it's not Twitter anymore. It's X, but uh, at VJG on Twitter or X is, uh, is really my other uh, account, but um, planning on, I'm trying to, to kind of get to a, a point where I can get my own podcast going and, and focus a little bit more on kind of the stuff that you're talking about and, and highlighting those in the industry who, you know, need that, that boost and, and deserve that attention. So, um, hoping to have more to talk about in that regard here in the next few months, but, um, but right now it's probably, if, if anyone needs anything or has any questions, hit me up on LinkedIn. I'm happy to help. Great. Sounds good. Um, before I let you go, I just got to mention um, that Super Bowl, Steelers and Cardinals, is funny because you ended up working for both of them. And yeah. also, that one is one of my favorite Super Bowls out of so many Super Bowls that I've seen because um, just to see how Arizona went on that run, that postseason run, I was rooting for the Cardinals to win for two reasons. Number one, I wanted to see someone new winning. And number two, I really wanted Kurt Warner um, who I respect his journey, by the way, yeah. um, to get at least that second Super Bowl. He should have had more than one in his career, but um, things happen in sports. So, but the, the way, but the way him and Larry Fitzgerald were performing that postseason was incredible. But that was a terrific Super Bowl. They almost pulled it off. But San Antonio Holmes, Big Ben, clutch, clutch. Um, so I like that one. As for the Penguins. The one that sticks out to me the most is that 2009 against the the Red Wings because the year before they lost to the Red Wings and then yep. to come back on the road, Game 7, and that was a tremendous finish to a Game 7. To win that for Sidney Crosby, to win his first um, Stanley Cup, um, that was that 2008-2008 back-to-back Cup Finals matchup elevated my love for hockey. So... I started watching mm -hmm. hockey in 2000, but it was those two um, Stanley Cubs that took it to a whole different stratosphere. Yeah, but, for um, sure. Yeah. yeah, I wanted to say that before to end this, but Zachary, thank you so much for to do this interview with me. I'm so happy to see what you're doing, and I can't wait to see more that you're going to be doing. But it's always great to talk to anyone who is in the same industry, the same field as ours, whether it's front or behind the camera. I like hearing their story, their journeys, and especially the ones who people don't know too much about. So that's one of the reasons why I created this platform. So I salute you, brother, and um, 
like I said, man, just keep going. Appreciate it, man. Yeah, it was, it was my pleasure. Thanks for having me on. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that interview. Um, it was great talking to Zach Green and his journey and everything that he's doing. Um, hit that thumbs up. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And you guys know the model. Have mutual respect, mutual love, and mutual admiration. So until next time.